Are you a bear, lion, wolf, or dolphin? I'm reading a book called The Power of When by Dr. Michael Bruce. He's a sleep specialist who's pretty popular, and he's written a book about chronotypes. Normally, you might be familiar with a chronotype as something like a night owl or an early bird, but Dr. Bruce actually defines four chronotypes based on animals. The first and most common chronotype is the bear, which fits about 50% of adults. Bears have a pretty normal pattern. They tend to wake up with the sun and then feel tired once the sun goes down. They're most ready for intense tasks mid-morning, but they have a dip in the early to mid-afternoon. The second chronotype is the lion. It's a type A personality that tends to fit about 15 to 20% of the population. These people tend to wake up really early in the morning, and they're most productive in the mornings. But by the time the evening rolls around, they're toast. They just want to go to bed. The third type is a wolf, which includes about 15 to 20% of the population. These are the late risers and late to bed people. They tend to be makers, creative types, and often introverted. Their most productive times of the day come in two spurts, one from about 12 to 2 p.m., and then they're more productive once everybody is thinking about going to bed. And finally, there's the dolphin, which tends to make up about 10 to 15% of the population. These people might not have a regular schedule, and they tend to be the insomniac, kind of light sleeper type people who might not really have a sleep routine and tend to be tired all the time. Dolphins tend to be perfectionists, and they're most productive from the mid-morning to the early afternoon. I've had several chronotypes throughout my life so far, and that's incredibly common, but I wasn't sure of my chronotype based on this description, so I thought it would be appropriate to take the test so that I can find out the right schedule for me. All right, I'm on the powerofwhenquiz.com, and let's dive right into it. All right, I guess it wants me to choose my gender, and I identify as man. What is your age range? I am 27. All right, so this is a little annoying. It keeps scrolling down every time I click the next option, but hey, it's the content that counts. The slightest sound or light can keep me awake or wake me up. No, I tend not to be a very light sleeper. I am probably not the deepest sleeper either, but uh, I can sleep and miss some sounds and sleep with some light around. So this is false. Food is not a great passion for me. That's absolutely false. I love food, I like cooking, and I'm gonna do that right after I make this video. I usually wake up before my alarm rings. I usually don't use an alarm clock, but the few times that I would use an alarm clock, such as when I have to make an early plane or something like that, I tend to be up a lot all night. When I did use an alarm clock in high school, I found that I would wake up a little bit before the alarm. So for me, I would say that I tend to wake up before the alarm rings. I can't sleep well on planes, even with an eye mask and earplugs. This is definitely true. I have a hard time sleeping on planes and hotel rooms the first night. Anytime I go to a hotel or an unfamiliar place, I have terrible sleep the first night. So this is true. I'm often irritable due to fatigue. I don't get fatigue a ton. I tend to be a pretty good sleeper. Um, so I don't get fatigued in the beginning. I do notice that I do get kind of irritable when I am fatigued, but uh, in general, I'm not fatigued, so I'm gonna choose false. I worry inordinately about small details. I would say this is more true than false. I'm probably not the biggest perfectionist, but I do try to think about the small things and the big things a lot. So um, I'm gonna call this true. I've been diagnosed as an insomniac. That is definitely false. In school, I was anxious about my grades. This is absolutely true. In grade school and high school, my parents were pretty strict about me getting good grades, and I think that that caused me to be a very nervous wreck when it comes to grades, so I would say this is very true. I lose sleep ruminating about what happened in the past and what might happen in the future. Sometimes, but usually not. I, I would say that this is only when I get really excited or nervous about something. Uh, but in general, that might also manifest more as a dream than uh, staying awake. So I would say more false than true that I lose sleep over things. I'm a perfectionist. I try to see the big picture and the small picture in things, but I, I do have a pretty high attention to detail. So I would call myself a perfectionist, although I do recognize that it's important to ship products and get things done like 
film this video and get it done even though it's not going to be perfect. So true. If you had nothing to do the next day and you gave yourself permission to sleep in as long as you like, when would you wake up? Uh, I tend to wake up in general around 8.30 to 9, normally, currently at least. So I would say after 8.45 a.m. It would probably be right, like, although like right around 8.45 to 9 a.m. though. Not too much later than that. When you have to get out of bed by a certain time, do you use an alarm clock? Yes, I definitely do. But I do not use the snooze function. I get up the first time. I might sit there for a couple minutes, but I'm not going to snooze because it's a waste of time to just keep hitting snooze when you're already awake. It doesn't make any sense. When do you wake up on the weekends? I tend to wake up around the same time as during the work week. I do work for myself, so that probably helps things a lot. When I was working for other people, I would try to go into work a little bit later than most other people would when that was acceptable to do so. But in general, I don't wake up too much later on the weekends than my normal schedule because I probably try to adapt to that schedule, but currently I'm more on the uh, more night owl train. So the same time as my work week schedule. How do I experience jet lag? I would say that I'm pretty adjusted within 48 hours, but not 100%. Like I'll still be somewhat tired after that. Um, I definitely struggle with it, but it's kind of in between these two, um, especially when using something like Time Shifter, the app that helps you with jet lag. So I'm gonna say I generally adjust within 48 hours. What's your favorite meal? Think time of the day more than menu. Okay, this question is a little weird. <laughs> Maybe I don't understand it completely. Uh, I like food a lot, um, but probably I'm most excited to finally sit down and eat breakfast a couple hours after I wake up, usually around one hour after waking up. So breakfast, I'm gonna say. If you were to flash back to high school and take the SAT again, when would you prefer to start the test for maximum focus and concentration? Okay, so the SAT was like, I think it was at like 7 in the morning or some ungodly early hour uh, when I took it. Uh, but I think it would be more like, you know, either late, mor like late morning would be kind of the ideal time for me or mid-afternoon. Um, so I don't see late morning, so probably mid-afternoon would be the right time. I tend to have this uh, work schedule where I do a little bit of work in the morning, but most of my work happens after most people's lunchtime, and then I keep working into the evening, so mid-afternoon. If you could choose any time of day to do an intense workout, when would you do it? Before 8 a.m., between 8 and 4, and after 4. Okay, so before 8 a.m. is too early because I'm usually not up then normally, but I probably would still do the intense workout in the morning like I do currently. So between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. for me. When are you most alert? Um, so I do most of my work in the starting in the early afternoon, and I'm probably most alert during the afternoon and evening, I would say. So... That's going to be four to six hours post wake up. If you could choose your own five hour work day, which block of consecutive hours would you choose? Okay, not 4 a.m. to 9 a.m. That's crazy. Uh, 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. would be the closest probably uh, because I'm not really with it until like 11 a.m. I actually usually don't take meetings until 11 a.m. So um, this might be a little bit late on the start time, but I'm definitely still with it at 9 p.m., so uh, 4 to 9 p.m. would be the time. Do you consider yourself left-brained, right-brained, or both? I'd say both. I have a balance of kind of the analytical side and the creative side, I like to think at least, so a balanced thinker. Do you nap? Sometimes. Very rarely, but... Um, it, like it's not just on the weekend it's often more during a work day that i'll take a nap um like maybe once a month but it's not usually on the weekend if you took a nap you'd be up all night no i find that's not the case i could even take a nap at 7 8 p.m 
And uh, I might go to sleep a little bit later that night, but I'll still generally have a pretty good night of sleep. So sometimes on the weekend would be the closest answer. If you had to do two hours of hard physical labor, like moving furniture or chopping wood, when would you choose to do it for maximum efficiency and safety? Well, I don't know because I do a lot of exercise usually around a half an hour after I wake up and I can handle that pretty well. So that could be an option. 11 to one, I would really more choose to do uh, work like uh, computer work at that time. But six to 8 p.m. might be okay. Yeah, I think I'd pretty with it at 6 to 8 p.m. So I think that's kind of what they're asking here. So I would choose the 6 to 8 p.m. option. Regarding your overall health, which statement sounds like you? I make healthy choices almost all the time, sometimes, or I struggle to make healthy choices. I like to think that I have a pretty good diet and sleep habit, even though I tend to sleep pretty late, uh, go to sleep pretty late, and wake up relatively late. I think that my life is generally in balance, so I'd say almost all of the time. I do like chocolate though. What's your comfort level with taking risks? Well, <laughs> this is a funny one because uh, I definitely worry about things a lot, uh, but I also probably do take more risks than a lot of people I know, you know, from a business perspective, from even doing something like this YouTube channel, like things that are a bit out of the ordinary. So I would say that my risk tolerance is pretty high. And also when you uh, put it in terms of things like investing, like I will probably actually have a higher risk tolerance because I'm thinking over the long term. Like I'm thinking if you can have a higher risk tolerance over the long term, like generally the returns are higher. Um, so it is kind of like this conservative uh, risk. So I'm going to say medium on this just because the question is pretty vague. Um, but I probably skew like medium high, but I'm just going to put medium because the question is not super clear. Do you consider yourself future oriented with big plans and goals, informed by the past, hopeful about the future and inspiring to live in the moment or present oriented? Uh, I'm definitely a future oriented person. Um, very idealistic. Although I do concern myself with how much money I'm going to get sooner rather than later. How would you characterize yourself as a student? Seller, solid, or a slacker? I would say solid. I'm probably not the most type A when it comes to academics. Um, I'm very interested in a lot of things, but uh, I think my I'm more of a big picture type of guy and I don't necessarily care about every little minute detail when it comes to learning a subject. Um, so I would say solid. When you first wake up in the morning, are you bright-eyed, dazed but not confused, groggy? It's probably between bright-eyed and dazed but not confused. I'm usually not too groggy. Uh, I think I have pretty good sleep and I wake up pretty well rested. Um, so I would lean more toward the bright-eyed. How would you describe your appetite within a half hour of waking? So yeah, I usually don't eat until probably about almost an hour after waking, I would say, because I wake up, do a little meditation, then I exercise for 15 to 20 minutes, and then by that time, with some buffer built into it, it's an hour after waking. Um, I'm not hungry a half hour after waking, but I start to get hungry after that. Um, so this is asking a half hour after waking, and I'm not hungry. How often do you suffer from the symptoms of insomnia? Uh, rarely. Yeah, only when adjusting to a new time zone. And it's like less about insomnia uh, and more about uh, the different environment for me. Although it says occasionally when going through a rough time or a stressed out, but it's more of like on an isolated one night type of basis. It's not like chronic even during that um, time. So I would say rarely for me. How would you describe your overall life satisfaction? High, good, or low? Uh, for me, it's somewhere between good and high. I definitely have a lot of goals, but I'm also like not a complacent person. Like I, I want to like make things happen. So I would say that my satisfaction is good just because I know that there's a lot of untapped potential that I'm trying to hit. Um, so I'm going to say good. Okay. And then I guess I fill in my name here so I can get my results. Um, 
first name and email, submit. This site is like not the best design because I can barely, <laughs> barely read the text because it's like dark text on the dark background. Um, but apparently I'm a bear chronotype. So let's see what Dr. Bruce has to say about bears. Thanks for taking my bio time quiz. It looks like your score puts you in the realm of being a bear. Good news, you're in good company. Some famous bears I've identified include Stephen King, George Orwell, the founder of Amazon, Jeff Bezos, Ellen DeGeneres, and even Ariana Huffington. So Ariana Huffington, the sleep uh, expert or influencer, as I should probably say, is a bear and so is Jeff Bezos, so I think I'm in good company here. While treating patients for the past 15 years, I've seen that everyone has a different biological clock. A biological clock is an internal timekeeper that sets your day's hormones, energy levels, and has an incredible influence on your daily success. At what time your clock runs is called your chronotype, and yours is a bear. So what does that really mean? Bears only hibernate at certain times of the year, but usually they follow a normal day-night schedule. Bears usually follow the schedule of society with sleep-wake patterns matching the solar cycle. Okay, so he says that bears usually follow the sleep-wake cycle of society, uh, which is interesting because I feel like I don't really follow it. I tend to be a little bit later as, of a chronotype than like somebody who's a more typical person would be, but that's interesting to see, so okay. Bears like to get their seven to eight hours, but they'll hit snooze a few times in the morning. They said that the bear will hit snooze a few times in the morning, which I also never do. Bears are usually team players and are important parts of the success machine. Bears are active in the day and restful at night. They like to graze and they look for food continually and they will eat regardless of when they had their last meal. They are playful and affectionate within a family unit and form close friendships with their larger society. It takes them a couple of hours to feel awake in the morning. They're often hungry upon awakening and may be hungry all the time. If food is available, they'll probably eat it, even if it's not a meal or snack time. So he says that in general, you're hungry all the time. You tend to be hungry right upon waking. I find that's not really true because I actually answered that question uh, like I'm not hungry half hour. I know they're trying to uh, do an average here, but that's just interesting because um, a lot of the things that he's saying, I feel like they don't really apply to me. Their diet isn't particularly good or bad. They may or may not be dedicated exercisers. Bears self-report their general health is fair. If they make an effort with diet and He says that bears uh, may or may not be exercisers and they generally report fair health. I feel like I exercise most days and I also feel that I have a pretty high health. Uh, so this is just interesting to see. Um, I don't know. I feel like I'm not really in this bucket. I, I feel like this is not really me exercise, they do so sporadically, usually with mixed results. Bears BMI tend to be average to high. He says average to high BMI. I actually have probably on the low end of a BMI. Um, so that's pretty interesting to see that. In the professional realm, bears are team players, balanced thinkers, worker bees, and middle managers with good people skills. Type B personalities, bears don't often do drama. They're not likely to try and get a colleague's job or blame others for their mistakes. In school, they were solid students and the same can-do attitude applies on the job. So I think this test might have put me into bear partially because I answered balanced thinker and solid students. Um, but like especially the balanced thinker aspect, uh, I don't know, I, I just, it just doesn't seem like me 100%. I, I feel like this might not totally accurately picture me, but maybe it does. Fire to do really good work and then go home and put their feet up. They're somewhat risk averse. Bears are unlikely to put themselves out on a limb professionally or personally. Bears like- Bears are unlikely to put themselves out on a limb personally or professionally. Well, I feel like I am putting myself out on a limb, so I definitely don't fit that. To be around other people and grow restless and bored if they're alone for too long. At a party, the gregarious guy, Manny- 
I'm totally fine being alone. This guy says that um, bears grow restless or bored, but uh, I'm totally fine being alone most of the time. I actually prefer being alone. Um, I'm not super social of a person. In the bar or flipping the burgers at the barbecue is probably a bear. In their personal relationships, bears can be easygoing, kind of to a fault. They tend to rate low in the ability to fix problems and understand what's really going on. This can be frustrating for their partners, especially insightful wolves and the anxious dolphins. Bears don't have high highs and low lows. But if they do get knocked off their even keel emotionally, it's a direct reaction to a real life crisis. So he says that bears don't have high highs or low lows, but... If they do get knocked off their even keel, uh, it's definitely a reaction to a, a life crisis. And I don't know, maybe because I do put myself in higher risk scenarios, ten, I tend to take things pretty seriously and have an emotional reaction to it. Maybe it's just because I have a lot going on and I tend to have a lot of things going like either really well or not really well. So hard to say. When the issue passes, so will the anxiety and depression. When the issue passes, so will the anxiety and depression. I think that's true. Uh, when the issue passes, I do tend to get over the depression and learn to live with some things. Um, but I definitely feel the lows. So I, I don't know if, if I, that's super accurate for me. So Dr. Bruce said to buy the book so I could understand how to apply the ideal lifestyle to my chronotype. And I have the book. I came to this quiz uh, seeking to learn what my actual chronotype is so that I could mo most effectively apply the things that were talked about in the book. But I don't know, I just feel like I'm not necessarily a bear. Um, so I'm gonna try some of the additional tests that he recommended in the book. Um, one of those is taking your temperature starting at 5 p.m. for several days in a row um, to see when your body temperature drops off. Um, and there are also some tests where you can do to see like, are you a bear or a lion? Are you a bear or a wolf? Um, so I'm going to do those tests as well and see if that comes up with anything different than what I'm getting from this quiz. So this is to be continued. It's a very interesting topic and probably very helpful once I do get to the bottom of this. Just, um, I don't know. It just, it doesn't feel like I'm a bear coming out of this. If you take the power of one quiz, I'd love to hear what you got. And then if you felt it matched up with who you actually are, or if you think that's not really the right characterization of you, this is to be continued. So thanks a lot. And I hope you have a great day.